Alrighty, so one of the things that trips students up is how to write a drum part in NoteFlight. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, so I'm going to give my test a title. I'm going to call it Drum Part. Now, NoteFlight by default starts with a piano staff. I've got a treble clef and a bass clef. They're not going to be useful to write a drum part. So we need to change our instruments. Uh, I'm going to add in a drum kit part first and then I'll, I'll get rid of the piano part second. So I'm going to add in an instrument and a drum kit is part of the unpitched percussion family. Uh, pitched percussion is our piano because a piano is hit by little hammers against strings making it a percussion instrument. So for our unpitched percussion uh, we want a drum kit standard and we can leave all of these things as they are. So my drum kit will always be at the bottom of your score. It's always the last thing. Uh, you've got pianos and guitars and woodwind parts and brass parts above it and your vocal line is always on the top. So now we can get rid of our piano part because we don't need it. Uh, so I can simply hit the bin over at the side and have my drum kit part left. You'll notice that it doesn't have a triple or a bass clef. It has a key signature and we're going to work in four beats per bar today. But the principle is the same for whatever key signature in. Uh, when I write in a drum part, you probably would have noticed by looking at some drum parts that certain stems go up and certain stems go down. So typically your bass drum stem is going to go down, but you can see if I insert a bass drum note to start off with, the stem goes up. So the way that we get stems to go both up and down is to use the voice feature in NoteFlight. So we go to our menu, we come down and we hit voice, and you can either hit upper or lower. And you'll see that it now gives us two sets of rests, one for the bottom part and our stem has gone down, and one for the top. And in our top part, our stems will go up. So I can do that by inserting a note and then pressing voice, or I can click in a new bar, head over to voice, and set the rests up before I even begin. So you can do it two ways. Now that I've got my stems going upwards and my stems going down, I need to imagine that I have two different lines of music on the one staff, a top line and a bottom line. Um, you use this same principle if you're writing more complex piano parts as well, where you might want a node to hold on the bottom in one finger uh, while something else is happening above it but in the same hand. So we're going to notate our hi-hat part first. So top line is our hi-hat and our ride cymbal. There's our ride cymbal. There's our hi-hat. We got one more. We got a crash cymbal. So typically a drum kit part is going to begin with a crash cymbal to signify the start of a four bar phrase. Often hi-hat parts or cymbal parts are played with uh, quarter notes. Oh, sorry, I played with uh, eighth notes. So we're going to change it to an eighth note and we're going to use the trusty R for replicate. And when we get to our second part, well, we wouldn't typically have two cymbal crashes in a row unless it was a heavy rock song and you were crashing on every single pulse in the bar. So we're going to arrow down. So we start with a crash and then move back to the hats. And then comes the easy bit. I hit replicate again and again. Now, you'll notice that it beams them in pairs. You may have seen drum kit parts beamed in groups of four. Both is, is acceptable. It just depends on what the program does. So, now I've got our hi-hat part in. We're going to put in our bass and snare part. And our bass and snare work on the same voice. They'll both have their stems going down. And typically, in a basic rock beat, they're going to alternate together. So you'll notice that our bass drum part is either of our two bottom lines. And this allows for if you were to have a double kick, so two bass drums in a drum kit. But typically, we would use this bottom space. Our snare drum is always going to be third space up. And in between, we'll have our toms. And I'll show you how to utilize the toms soon to do a little fill. Uh, so I have in a pretty basic rock beat at the moment. It sounds like this. And that will do us to get started. Uh, drum kits parts are very repetitive, so I'm actually going to replicate this second bar over. 
But in my second bar, I wouldn't normally start with a cymbal crash. I'd have that every four beats, so I'm going to remove it. Uh, when I get to my third bar, uh, I want to show you guys a different idea because this drum kit part can get a little boring. So I'll replicate it again, but this time I'm going to move my bass drum and snare drum part around a little bit. Uh, I don't want my second bass drum of the bar to fall exactly on the beat. So I'm going to split my snare drum part into some eighth notes now and then sit my kick part off the beat and I'm even going to sit my next snare drum part off the beat as well just to create a little bit of interest in my piece. And look, let's go completely wild and we'll split our last beat as well just to get a kind of really syncopated groove. We'll have a listen to this bar. So that sounds kind of cool. Let's listen all together and then we're going to do something uh, with our toms in the last bar. So we've got a cool sort of drum kit part happening. Now typically a drum kit part every four or eight bars might have some kind of fill to accent something in the music. A fill often lasts two or four beats, so we're going to write a two beat fill. I'm going to take the last two beats of my third bar, replicate them in, and this now gives me two beats to play with. Our fill will be written in place of our snare drum because it's played by our hands. We're not going to have our right hand part of the hi-hats anymore because that's going to come onto the toms too and we're still going to have our bass drum in the bottom. So I'm going to put in uh, a bass drum part really simple on my lower voice. I'll put in two quarter notes, boom, boom, and above it I'm going to put in uh, a ticker T rhythm perhaps. So I'm going to use a combination of eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So we're going to start up on our high tom, up here, and it's going to play T, ticker, and then we might have a ticker T to sort of end and take us the rest of the way down. Now, a good fill often will start on the snare drum. It'll move to the high tom. It'll then move to our mid tom. And then it'll come back to our low tom. So let's notate a really simple fill. Let's have a look at this fill and see how it sounds. So it's a pretty simple fill. We're going to take our first bar and drop it back in at the end. And now we can hear our four bars plus a fifth that leads us back into what would be another repetition. So here we go. So a really simple drum part. Before the end of the video, I'll remind you just again of how we set up those voices because they're critical. So when we set up our voices, we come into our bar first, best to click in the bar, up to the menu, down to voice, and then it doesn't matter if you hit upper or lower because either one will split the bar in two so that you get those upward stems and so you get some downward stems. Okay, hope that helped. Here's our rhythm once again. See you later.